The last thing that we'll do in deploying this crash course Microsoft BI SharePoint 2013 environment is to install the middle tier Power Pivot components into the farm. So when we installed Power Pivot, we actually installed it outside the farm and just gave the SharePoint farm the permissions to use it as a third party service to do the calculation of workbooks. But what that doesn't give us is a few things. So uh, if we add the middle tier components into the farm, we'll get scheduled refresh because right now we can load our power pivot books into the farm but we can't actually refresh them so that's it's kind of an incomplete solution but uh, but this uh, this step will add the, the more completeness the second thing that's significant is the BISM data sources so this gives us the ability to create data sources that can very easily launch a power pivot for SharePoint uh, designer for example and why wouldn't you want to do this well Probably the only reason is if your SharePoint policy or your SharePoint governance policy is that you don't install things into the farm environment that aren't already there. So if, uh, for example, you had a very large farm with a lot of users and hundreds of servers or dozens of servers, you know, the, the complexity, expense, uh, etc. of adding these, uh, these components into the farm may be um, unacceptable, in which case you can just uh, uh, have the basic level of a power pivot for SharePoint functionality without even touching anything in the farm except for the Excel services configuration. So how do we do that? Well, we have to run a an add-in on each server in the farm. So the add-in is SP Power Pivot MSI. It's very similar to the reporting services add-in, the RS uh, SharePoint.MSI that we use for reporting services to add web parts and to add functionality. It serves almost the same purpose. So we'll run that in each server in the farm. And once we've done that, there will be a Power Pivot for SharePoint configuration tool that will show up on each of the servers that we run that uh, MSI on and we're going to run that on S SP app 2 which is where which is a really our BI server where all of our BI services are so we're going to run it on that server and what that will do is insert all these content types and different configurations into the SharePoint farm for us so it's a, it's a very nice wizard you could do this manually but uh, why bother if there's a great wizard and, and it is a great wizard so to run this component is very similar to what we did before and we just run the SP power pivot MSI, it's about 90 megabytes. It doesn't take that long to run. This will install the components that we need in order to configure and run Power Pivot for SharePoint as an integral part of the SharePoint environment. So pretty straightforward, just uh, accept terms and click on through and install. And at the same time I'm running this installer on the other SharePoint servers. So while those are finishing up, I'm going to go ahead and run the configuration utility. After the tool is done examining the system, it will ask me what I want to do. The only option really here is to configure or repair, so I click OK. And then once that's done, we get this nice little dialog it's kind of figured out everything it could do and all it wants is my credentials so I'm not gonna put my credentials in here I'm actually gonna put the farm credentials in here and the database server is correct so anything that it wants to create on the database will be over on the SPDB one so if I just put in those credentials and validate everything validates it all looks good if I'm curious what's gonna happen I can actually go here and look at these PowerShell commands that are going to be sent. And I'm pretty happy with that, so I'll just click Run. And it says all of the configuration sets that are flagged will be applied to SharePoint Farm. Do you want to continue? And the answer is yes. Okay, our wizard is completed and all the tasks are done. So at this point, we should see that we have. Power Pivot for SharePoint installed in our environment. Now that the Power Pivot mid tier components are installed, we can kind of check them out. The first thing I'm going to do is see if I can create a BISM data source in my Data Connections folder. So in my Data Connection library, I'm going to add a content source for the BISM files. So I'll just need to come into Settings and add from existing site. And if I choose Business Intelligence, I have a BI Semantic Model Connection, so I can add that. Now what that will let me do is add that type of a file from the menu. So click File, 
new document. There's my BI semantic model connection. Now I can connect this to a uh, a workbook within the SharePoint environment, or I can connect it to an analysis services server. So I'm going to just connect it to the same server I've been using. That's sbdb2 backslash tabular, and then that's the database there. So I click OK. That should save and succeed. And if that works, when I click on it, I should be launched into a PowerView authoring window and should see my data model on the right hand side. And if I did, then I know that, uh, that the BISM type is working and reporting services is properly processing my PowerView data. So I'm not going to go and touch that extensively. And then the, the last thing I'm going to do is just check and uh, see how my management dashboard for Power Pivot is working now. Because now that I've installed the mid tier services, I should have a dashboard and actually I'm going to show you that it's not quite working right because of some permission issues. The reason this is happening is because all of these components are trying to refresh from the SharePoint admin content database and the service account running these things don't have any access to that. So we're going to have to resolve that. And the way we'll resolve that is by giving the account that runs Excel services, which is service SPBI, access to that admin content database where all these assets are stored. Same thing we had to do with the normal SharePoint site collection content database. So to do that let's pop over to Management Studio and if I look at security logins and find the BI account go to my user mapping and there's my admin content database And then I'm going to upgrade the permission of that account so it can read those files. And now, like magic, the management dashboard starts at least to function. However, this hasn't been running long enough to show us any data, but the absence of errors and that I can see that uh, the workbooks actually are bringing out the, doing the best they can makes me feel like, yeah, we're, we're going in the right direction. So at this point, we have a pretty complete multi-server distributed farm with Kerberos delegation, all of the BI services, Excel services, Performance Point, Reporting Services, Power Pivot for SharePoint, and everything's up and running, and we have it functionally tested. So at this point, we could expand it. Um, or we could just begin actually building our sites and dashboards and assets and on a nice stable platform that has everything up and running. So I hope this was a useful set of uh, lessons for you and good luck installing your own environment.